Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week's screen deals with the R-squared growth rate. What is it and how do we use it? Well, I think we're all going to learn something from this one because this is a new one on me as well. Kevin Matris, who is our top stock screener and head of our research wizard division here at Zach's, is going to fill us in. Sounds like a geometry class that we're signing up for here. Yeah, we're back in school. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, it's and that wasn't my favorite subject. <laughs> You know, the, the R-squared growth rate, uh, it's not as scary as it sounds, uh, and uh, it's pretty easy to understand. The R-squared growth rate is simply a measure of how close the actual earnings come in line with the earnings growth on a regression basis. Uh, in other words, how closely do the earnings come in line with the regression line? Oh, that clears it up for you. <laughs> You Check have to it. give me a little more to go on. Yeah, so for instance, the range for an R-squared value is between 0 and 1, or if you express it as a percentage, between 0% and 100%. The higher the value, the closer the data conforms to the regression line. The lower the value, the worse the data conforms to the regression line. Um, a value of 1 means the data is a perfect fit, very hard to see, and a value of 0 means it's pretty much scattered all over the place. So, for example, if you have a regression line and you have the data scattered all over the place, that would give you a very low score because there really isn't any rhyme or reason for how that data is coming in. On the other hand, if you have a regression line and you see the data points very close to the line, that shows that, uh, that it's conforming to the regression line. That is going to give you a higher score. In short, there is less deviation from the regression of the growth rate. And the less deviation there is, the more reliable you would think that those numbers would be. All right. It's beginning to, to come together in my mind here a little bit, beginning to make some sense. Keep going. Well, the reason why somebody would want to use this is because you want to take a look at the stock's ability to produce data or produce uh, growth rates in line with trend line regression, with trend line growth rates. Now, again, there is no guarantee that future data isn't going to veer off course. Uh, but again, seeing how well the data points have come in line with a trend line growth rate, uh, regression growth rate, is very good to know. What's interesting, though, is that the distribution of the R squared values is an inverted bell curve, or well curve, if you will. When you look at a normal distribution, typically the majority of the values will come in the middle of the ranges with small amounts coming on either side of the middle, kind of like for a symmetrical bell curve. What's interesting is that this was a well curve, so you had the majority of the ranges coming in on either side with a smaller percentage coming in the middle. For instance, 28% of the R squared values fell within the range of 0.33 and 0.66, with roughly 38% falling lower than that and roughly 38% coming in higher. So it was a very interesting distribution, so I decided to test it. Before I did, though, and before I saw how the, uh, the values were distributed, I first thought that a value of 1 was going to be the best fit, with 0 being the worst. But when I tested it along with a group of other items, I had found that those values were the least reliable, and I had found a range that produced the overwhelmingly best results. And that's what we're going to talk about in this week's screen. All right. It's beginning to make more sense to okay. me. The, the more I hear you cite examples and explain it. Is it expressed R to the second power as well? No. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very simple value, um, you know, just uh, 0.3 or 0.6. But again, that is really just a percentage. So 0.5 is really like 50%. Right. But anyway. Screen parameters. Yeah, here's the screen. Uh, first off, I'm looking at companies with a Zach's rank of less than or equals to 2. So again, we're looking at companies that are buys and strong buys by Zach's. The R squared EPS growth rate, I'm looking for companies within a range of between 0.50 and 0.66, which in short means 50 to 60 percent fit with the growth rate regression. And again, that happens to be one of the best tested ranges. 
Also too, I'm looking for the peg ratio to be less than or equals to one. I want the PE using 12 month EPS to be within a range of between five and 15, low multiples, especially in this environment. Mm -hmm. And again, I want the percent change in price over the last four weeks to be greater than minus five. So it cannot have fallen more than 5% within the last four weeks. And I'm also applying these parameters to prices greater than $5, as well as volume greater than or equals to 100,000 shares. Here's the kicker though. I tested this strategy over 2008. Mm -hmm. I did so using a four week holding period and I ended up doing a robustness test where I started it on multiple different start dates. What's interesting is that this strategy in 2008 showed a uh, average total compounded return of 13.7% while the S&P lost 35.7. So the returns, especially in last year's you know, debacle of a market, were absolutely fantastic. All right, an example of a stock that came through the screen. You know, we're going to do one even better. I've got all six stocks that came through the screen Whoa, this week. Day. And here's what they <laughs> here's what they are. You've got Cracker Barrel, uh, City Trends, Domino's Pizza, Euronet Worldwide, Mass Tech Inc., and Powell Industries. What's interesting is that these stocks came through a very diverse set of industries, and I would encourage anybody to take a look at these stocks, do your own research, take a look at, uh, at what makes these stocks tick, and compare those stocks to the stocks that you have in your own portfolio, see how they stack up. Do you own any of them? Not at the moment. Okay, <laughs> but as soon as he leaves it, no, I'm just kidding. And if you would like to actually take a look at the text version of this piece to try to get a better understanding, of what Kevin talked about uh, in this brand new screen that he uh, launched on us here today. Go over to Zax.com, especially if you're accessing this video outside of Zax.com. And if you scroll down uh, about midway down the page, you'll see Kevin's picture with the headline of this current piece right next to it. Click on it, it'll take you right to it. You know, Kevin uses the research wizard to achieve all of his screens. And if you'd like to be more like Kevin, and who wouldn't these days, uh, you can go to Zax.com forward slash research wizard and find out more about that piece of software as well. With Kevin Matris, I'm Terry Ruffalo.